Hello, this is Chris with The Money Coaches, and today I want to talk to you about a program called Quicken Willmaker Plus 2018. It's a program that we at The Money Coaches recommend if you are wanting to create a will, and you definitely should if you don't have one, but you don't want to deal directly with an attorney to do it. This is a great downloadable software that you can use, very self-explanatory. We'll walk you through the process and we'll help you create a will. So I'm going to walk you through this process, help you familiarize yourself with it, and decide if this is something that you want to use. Now, when you begin, you're going to open the program. Your screen's not going to look exactly like this. It's going to actually call for you to enter your name. So you're going to enter your legal name, and it's going to take you to this screen. Now, I've pre-populated some of this so that we don't have to go through it, and, and you don't have to wait to you know, hear me typing all of my information in. But... You're going to see this. It's going to say John Doe here at the beginning, the will for John Doe, and we've got different options available to you. You can do a power of attorney. Uh, you can do final arrangements, online living trust. We're actually going to do a will. And so normally this is going to say start, but right now it's going to say resume. So we're going to click there. And if you'll notice on the side here right away, you're going to have several links. You can click these and it's going to open more resources for you. If you have questions, this is going to show you an example of a will. Uh, for example, and you can minimize it by clicking it again just like that. Now on the left hand side, what you're going to see are most of these boxes are going to look like this. They're either going to be an empty box or it's going to be a box with a bullet point in it. Mine have check marks because I've gone through and pre-done this, but, but normally that's not what you would do. So you're going to select this first option here, you and your residence. Now you're going to enter your name, your gender, and you're going to click next. You're going to select your state, I've chosen Indiana and county. Park County for me, and that's going to take you back to this menu. You've completed that part, so you're going to enter then the family part. You select what option applies there, and it's going to give you, you know, some different information. For example, if you were were a widower or a widow, that's going to tell you how you need to uh, answer those questions. If there's, you know, any questions you have about spouses, you've got that information on the side there, and you're going to enter your spouse's name and gender. And then you're going to click next and it takes you right back to this main page again. And so now you're going to have the next option that's going to pop up. And this will be easier for you than it is for me because right now I'm selecting these. But normally you're going to actually have, like I said, an indicator here by way of unchecked boxes what's left to be done. So, so children and grandchildren. I've got one one month old here listed. And if you open that up, this is, this is that process. You select a birth date. You can either enter it manually or you can select this nice little deal there, and that will allow you to enter the date. Then you're going to click Next. If you wanted to add another child, you can do that right there. And it's going to give, again, a contingencies dependent upon your situation. So if you have you know, stepchildren or deceased children or any other things like that, that you could actually, um, you could actually go in and, and read more about what to do in those particular circumstances. So you go ahead and click Next there, and you get this information about choosing a guardian if you have a minor child and you know what kinds of restrictions co-guardians all of that kind of stuff and you're gonna go ahead and click next and decide whether you're gonna do that now this is important and it's it's a very big deal to actually go through the process of deciding on a guardian for your child because if you don't do this it leaves that responsibility with the state and that's generally not the best way to do things. It's much better if you are the one making those decisions and if you make them clear and easy to understand. So I would recommend definitely deciding on a guardian because then you get a, you get the full say in the matter rather than allowing it to be determined by someone who you where you, when you have no control. So uh, you click next there and you can actually choose an individual or a couple. Um, and then you'll choose an alternate if for some reason they're unable to to serve. And again, this can be updated. So if you would choose, for example, for myself, uh, my parents would be probably my main selection. But if, for instance, they were to pass away, they would no longer be that top option. I can go back and revise my will and, and change it as needed. So you fill in <clears throat> whoever it is that you want in those roles, and it's going to give you a lot of contingencies here. For example, if both parents have wills, 
If both you and your child's other parent name a guardian in your wills, it's important that you both have the same name. That's why you should be discussing this with your spouse, right? It makes perfect sense. Don't put different people in your wills because it's going to create a problem legally, and it can create a lot of tension with families. So make sure that you discuss this. This is a pro process that, as a married couple, you need to go through together. So you click Next here. And you have an opportunity now, and I've already pre-written this, but you have an opportunity to speak to whoever is executing this will, right? So when you're gone, a good judge and a good attorney and a good executor are going to do the best that they can to execute your will to your specifications. But if you don't give a lot of those and you're vague, it's going to make it harder for them to do their job. So what's great here is you have an opportunity to write out why you've selected the people that you did to take care of your children. So you can give the qualities that you uh, that you value and you can talk about those things and it, it gives you here how the courts decide. That's going to be information that's useful to you as well. But make sure that you take advantage of this. I wrote a very brief one. You can write a much longer one if you choose to do so. But this is an opportunity for you to give in clear examples why it is that you've selected the people you did. And then you click next. So if you have grandchildren and this you know, you're able to list grandchildren that you would be including um, here, that's not the case for me, but you could you select yes and can go on from there. You click next. And now we get to pets. And this is funny because this is not something that I thought about, and I actually do have pets. So when I clicked this, I thought, you know, if something would happen to us, what would happen to our pets? Well, you're able to determine that right now. And you click yes and enter the pet's information and you know, you include some sort of a descriptor so they know. I mean, if you have a if you live on a, you know, a property that's on a farm and you have an animal that roams they may they need to know that they don't take your neighbor's dog and give it to someone else that wouldn't be a great thing so you let them know what your dog looks like or you know some sort of uh, description so that they can identify and you know who it is that would be getting that one and, and I thought this was a little bit comical but you have a, an, an alternate for your your pet uh, in case for some reason your pet person is is not available or not interested in, in taking your pet that you have a couple of, of people there. And then you can actually opt to give them some amount of money. So if there was going to be, you know, obviously pets, there's an expense involved. If they don't typically have a pet or if you wanted to cover some of those expenses, you're able to do that there. And then you can add additional pets and, you know, tons more information here. You can have the same thing. You can have information explaining your decision on that. Now, you're going to come to leaving your property. So there's a nice property worksheet here that you can access and you can go through and break this up depending upon how you're going to do this. You may want to specify uh, different things and you know there's some that you know it's going to say what stuff you should and should not include in your will and you can actually go in and be as specific or as vague as you want to about what's what things that you're wanting to leave. So if you, for example, wanted to simply leave everything like I've chosen to do here to your spouse, that is an option for you. You can leave to your you know, everything to your spouse with a few exceptions, and so you could give specific items to others. Or if you just wanted to, to do it a completely different way, you can leave it really however you want to. Uh, but that's an option. So, you you know, I've selected leave it to your spouse. And so then it does give you the contingency that what if your spouse doesn't survive? Well, then you would leave it to your son. Uh, or you could leave it to alternate. It's going to give you these different options. You can make a different plan entirely. Or you can name no alternate beneficiary so that in the in the event that your spouse does not survive, uh, it would go into probate and be determined by a court how it would be. Uh, how it would be dealt with. So I've selected to leave that to Billy. Now, as we know, he is a one month old in this scenario. And so um, the next option here is if, if for some reason your child didn't survive and you can leave an alternate beneficiary and, or you can make a different plan or leave none uh, up to you there. And then you can actually go and I've chosen to leave an alternate and write that person's name in there and click next. Now, the um, thing that we're going to do later is it's actually going to have us set up, you know, here this is property management. So because one of the contingencies, contingencies is leaving money to a one-month-old, probably not going to be able to take care of physical property. So I've left my home uh, to my one-month-old son 
it is helpful to leave a person as a trustee and a property manager of that in his stead because he's one month he's not able to take care of that so you can select to do that from here and you can go into property management options it's going to tell you the different options that you can can use and again great resources over here if you don't understand and then the it, this is going to compare a couple of these options and you can obviously click here to read more uh, into that if you want to do so and then you select who it is that you're going to establish this trust for so if you're establishing it for a, a young beneficiary like your son I've chosen to do a child's trust and then you also are dealing with like this says money that would be coming from life insurance policy or anything like that that would also need to be managed by someone probably other than the one month old you can select who that person would be so you've got your physical property and your physical things and then you've got money and things like that that would come from life insurance that need to be managed and you can add a, a main person and an alternate as well so once you've selected that you're back to your main menu at this point we are to forgiving debts and so you can cancel any debts if you like uh, you can choose not to do that as well um, in this case just to show an example we've got that on here you can list someone's name the date that the debt was incurred specifically is what you're uh, what you're listing here and then the amount that you wish to forgive so you could forgive all of it or you could forgive some of it it would be up to you to do that and you can actually you do whatever you like there you can you can choose to do that from that menu and that gives you that opportunity to do that and then you're gonna select your executor and that's really important so this person needs to have been talked with because you don't simply want to just name someone as your executor and then let them find out when your will is being read which uh, it, not a good situation for them to be in it isn't a, a thing that requires them being a pretty responsible person and there are a lot of things that fall under there so the executor's duties here's the things that that fall under there so obtaining you know death certificates uh, they're going to be contacting beneficiaries examining the inventory of the deceased person's safety deposit boxes collecting mail canceling cards and subscriptions which could be a significant duty in and of itself notifying social security and other benefits administrators and so forth and so on lots of things that this person has to do not a small responsibility to take on or to assign someone to take on and so some people actually elect to do that outside of the family if they think that works best for them and that's totally fine some people will select a law firm or a bank to actually do this and you can you can do that usually for like a two to four percent fee of your estate's value you can actually assign or or hire a bank or a law firm to do that for you and if you have a family who are contentious and you think there may be infighting if a family member were involved sometimes that is the best option to use but this person is a very important person is the the gist of what I'm trying to get across to you that this is an important duty and you want to make sure you're very careful who you select and how you select them so uh, you can choose next here now this gives you the option to assign one or more executors now for our for our case I assigned one in my personal one I will I will tell you I actually assigned two uh, I actually assigned my wife as one and my father as a a co-executor with her simply because the burden of that and the knowledge behind how you know that process maybe is helpful to have two people but you will have to be selective about who those two people are and they would have to be people who you think could work well together you don't want to create opportunities where there's more tension so one executor may be the best way to go in most cases now I've selected uh, in our scenario I've selected uh, the spouse here and it's going to have you select an alternate so you go in and select an alternate in this case I've selected the same person as who would be the guardian of uh, our child in the event that you know that both of us were to pass on so that is an easy way for you know those you know those people are going to be taking on a significant amount of responsibility they're going to be important but you've got you know a couple of alternates and again the alternates should know their alternates as well don't make that a surprise for them either and then here in this case it actually is going to ask for a second alternate and in this case I've actually said a law firm so at that point 
uh, it would be handed over to a law firm to manage from there. And that way you kind of, if you get to that third point, you really, you know, maybe you just say at this point, we would just need somebody else to do it to make sure that we don't have to go to a fourth or, or whatever might be the case. Again, second here, if you don't name it, and it tells you if you don't name a second alternate, you know, the kinds of things that happen, all that stuff on the side, all of this is worth reading through. I'm not going to go through all of that with you, but there's all valuable stuff there. And then it's going to take you to this wrap up page. Okay. So this is going to allow you to look through and review the names of people who are in your will. So if you've forgotten someone or something, it's going to be pretty quick to see, oh, there's not a name on here. Now it's not going to have everything here, but so let's say I click one of these names. I can add more information about this organization. I can add, so if I go here to here, I can add more information here. Organization wise, I can go in here and change anything that I want to. So if I want contact information for that person to make it easier to execute this will, that is all available because obviously the names that I've selected because they are fictional are more diff would be difficult to get a hold of. It might be that you would find a lot of people whose name is Bill Ross and so because of that it would be useful to have more info on them so you click next and it's going to actually ask for your social security number this is useful to your executor because they're going to have to have your social security number to be able to find a lot of information to be able to close accounts to be able to access a lot of things they're going to need to know that information so then it's going to take you to a summary this is going to let you go completely through everything you have here and review it. And this is great because it, it's going to let you see everything in pretty succinct detail. You can see that and you can click next if that is everything. And then you click next from here. And then this is going to allow you, it's going to allow you to display all this stuff. So you can select which of these things that you want displayed and you click OK. You can click Help if you want more information. We're going to go ahead and cancel that right now. And that's all there is. You can click up here and you can select Save. It's already a file that we've created before, so it will save. Otherwise, it's going to ask you to name that file, and you've got that done. And so then you, you know, that, that's the process. It's pretty straightforward and simple. If I can walk you through doing it in less than 20 minutes, it must not be too too difficult. Now the deciding process obviously takes longer and you'll need to have lots of good discussions. Like I said, it should be done with a spouse, but it's a pretty simple and straightforward program and there are a lot of other things as we talked about at the very outset that you can do with this program, including living wills and you know, power of attorney and all those kinds of things. But a valuable tool, a very useful resource and if you actually go to our website, there are um, ways to get it. You, you can download it directly uh, from links that provide that are provided on themoneycoaches.com. And actually, if you download it through those links, it gives us credit and does help us if you do that. So if you think that you would like to use Willmaker and you think that that's something that would be valuable to you, go to www.themoneycoaches.com. If you click on our blog and read some of our Will blog posts, they've all got the links in the blog. It's a program that we believe in, and it actually does help us out if you if you download it by using us, and it doesn't cost you anything. So, uh, uh, doesn't cost you any additional to to buy it that way. So, so good program overall, and uh, we hope that this has been a helpful demonstration. If you do have additional questions, you can always reach out to us. Uh, multiple ways to do that. And like I said, check out themoneycoaches.com for all of your financial planning and wellness needs.